Hey guys, welcome to Sippin' and Spillin'. I'm Mike. Sippin' and Spillin'. Start that over, please. Yeah. Hey guys, welcome to Three Mississippi. I'm Mike. I'm Frankie. And today we're gonna be making some tomato sauce. Let's do this. So guys, I make some really good pasta sauce. I've made it for years and I don't use a recipe. I do it to taste as I go. So what we're gonna do today, just for you guys, is we're gonna make this and we're gonna actually measure as we go and we're gonna create the recipe for my amazing pasta sauce for the very first time. Now, we're starting out with homegrown tomatoes. Take a look at these guys. These are Super awesome San Marzano. Uh, if you're interested in growing this variety, it's called Pomodoro Squisito. It's an F1 uh, that's supposed to be blight resistant and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I'll just say this. It's done amazing. It's produced extremely well. This is 25.5 pounds of San Marzano's. And then right here, we have another 10 pounds of Martino's Romas. I like to use sauce tomatoes when I make sauce. And both of these fall into that category. So combined, we're starting out with 35.5 pounds of tomatoes. And I'm going to show you guys how we process these tomatoes right now. Actually, let me take that back. You're about to watch Frankie process 35.5 pounds of tomatoes. I'm going to help her a little bit. All right, the first thing I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to take a sharp blade. And I'm just going to score the top of these tomatoes. All right, I'm going to do this like this. This is gonna make them easier to peel in a couple of minutes. I'm gonna get about four or five of them at a time here. And then I'm gonna drop them into my boiling water like so right here. And I'm gonna count about 15 seconds out. I'm gonna go one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. Oh, wait, see what I did there? All right, so the idea here is when we're blanching them, uh, we're not cooking them. We're just trying to get that skin softened up. And so I'll leave them in there about 15 seconds. And I'm just going to check them. I'm looking for the skin to kind of start to peel back a little. Uh, maybe 20 seconds. Who's counting? I'll show you what we're looking for. See how that skin's starting to kind of pull back right there? I'm going to call that. So now we're going to take them out of there. And we're going to drop them right into a cold bath. All right. We want to stop the cooking process and you know that ice water i think kind of helps pull the skin off of there so now we're going to do that a whole bunch more times Okay, so now what you're going to do is pull one of these at the ice bath. This one just had like a good split in the skin already just from being in the water. So then you're literally just going to, the skin should just come off really easy. And if you need to, you can dunk it in the water again, like the ice water. But it should come off pretty easy. And then you have a naked tomato. <clears throat> and afraid. Yeah. It's terrified. Yeah. And then you repeat. A million times. All right, guys. So now that we've got a bunch of beautifully skinned sauce tomatoes, we need to get the undesirable portion out. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this tomato, lay it long ways, and just cut it right down the middle like so. Okay. Then we're going to take our blade and we're just going to cut that little piece out right there that goes in the sauce bucket okay and these are going to go to the chickens just like that now we just need to do that about a hundred more times
Okay guys, I was telling you a little earlier about the fact that these are sauce tomatoes. And I want to clarify what that means, okay? This right here is called a corps de bue. A lot of people call it an ox heart. Look at the shape. Now, I want you to take a look at what happens when I slice this tomato. Take a look at that, all right? You see how much space there is in here with these big gel sacks where the seeds are? Um, this is a pretty meaty tomato and it's a, it's a nice looking tomato, but it still has a lot of juice in it. And compared to a sauce tomato, put that over there, I want you to take a look at the inside of that tomato, okay? Look at how there's hardly any seeds and it's super meaty. Now, this half of a San Marzano is probably twice as uh, small as this ox heart. And I would say that they probably weigh close to the same. This has just got a lot of air in it. There's your difference. Sauce tomato, slicing tomato. If you want to have good sauce and you don't want to be fighting with how watery it is, use your sauce tomato. Okay, so we got them all, got all the, uh, the ends removed, and uh, this stuff that's left on the board here, look at that guys, ooh, see that, that's good stuff, we're gonna, now some people don't like the seeds, they want to run it through a food mill and get those seeds out, first of all, I'm using varieties that don't have <clears throat> too many seeds, but uh, I personally don't mind the seeds, and I don't see the extra effort to get the seeds removed reap any rewards that are that noticeable. Now, I will say this, this stuff right here, all of the skins and the ends and the cores, don't throw this away guys, this has got to go in your compost pile. That is, That just wants to be compost, so anyway, now we got all of this. And this is just the, you know, the flesh of the, that's a little Roma right there. You can kind of tell the difference between your San Marzanos. I did those first, so we'll get down here and grab some San Marzanos. See the San Marzano versus the Romas. They're definitely a different tomato, uh, but they are both sauce tomatoes. So what we're going to do now is get all of this transferred into a 22 quart stainless steel pot so we can start simmering. Uh, it's kind of a long cook process, what I do to make my sauce. There's probably quicker and easier ways to do it, but this is my way, and it is what it is. So, let's get this stuff transferred into a pot. Now, I have heard plenty of people say, I think I even read it on the World Wide Web somewhere, that because tomatoes are so acidic, cooking them in aluminum can be bad. I have cooked them in aluminum before, not gonna lie, uh, but I stick to a stainless steel pot just to be safe. So there we go, take a look at that. That's a good 16 to 18 quarts of uh, obviously chunky tomatoes. Now, as I cook this, they're gonna break down and that's gonna be about half of that. So I'm probably looking at eight, eight to nine quarts hopefully, of sauce by the time it's all said and done. But let's get over here, get that on there, turn it on. And now we get to take a break, guys. The first step here is to let this get up to a simmer. All right, so this has been simmering now for about huh, probably 45 minutes. One episode of Joe Pickett. They've definitely reduced a bit. I was simmering them with the top on because I wanted to hold the juice in there uh, while I was breaking these things down. The rest of the cook time is gonna be top off because we still wanna get rid of a lot of the liquid. So the first thing I'm gonna do, turn this off for just a minute. I'm gonna try not to make a mess, but I'm probably going to, we'll see. We're going in the blender with these bad boys and girls. You'll notice I've added no salt, pepper, seasonings, or anything yet. And the reason for that 
is because this is still going to reduce quite a bit from where it is. And the mistake you can make is adding salt to something and then reducing that something down to half of what it was. And now you essentially have twice as much salt per volume, right? So you don't want to do that. So I'm just breaking this up. Do about the consistency that you're going to want for. Oh, come on out of there. Mm -hmm. That's not how you get it off. I don't know what you're trying to do right now. Are you just trying to get the lid yeah. off? You created a suction because it's hot. You have to, yeah. Yeah, yeah. how do you like me? Now? It's science, bro. So we're just going to do this a bunch of times until we have a tub of that right there. That's already looking good. I'll tell you what. Ooh, that's hot. <clears throat> Touches boiling tomato, surprised by the heat. 212 degrees. Hmm. Now the reason I'm spooning this out of here and not dumping it out of there is because again, we don't want as much water or juice as there is in this pan. When we're done here, we're going to have a bunch of tomato juice that we're going to jar separately because it's good stuff. Uh, but uh, we want to just kind of spoon out all this flesh so you get that consistency right there. Okay, once we got most of the pulp out of here and run through the blender, we're going to take this, put it right here, and we're going to pour this through it. Takes a minute, but this is all good tomato uh, juice here, so you don't want to lose this. And you definitely don't want all that juice in your tomato sauce because you'll have to cook it for days in order to reduce that juice down. And uh, tomato juice is good. It just needs vodka and Worcestershire. And a celery stick. And hot sauce, and horseradish, and fresh lime juice, and... So now we have four quarts, or eight pints, of tomato juice, which we're going to process separately. Four quarts of juice pulled off. Now look at the consistency of this. This is, this is pasta sauce right here. I mean, this is the consistency. Slightly thin, but after we cook it for a little while, and add all of our other ingredients and it reduces just a little. This is this is how much pasta sauce we're looking at. So now we're gonna transfer this back into our pot that I just washed. We're gonna splash it all over mama's kitchen. Mm. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. In case any of y'all are wondering why good pasta sauce costs so much, it's very labor intensive. I'd say that right there is probably about 12 quarts or 11 quarts. So we're probably somewhere at the eight quart uh, or 16 pint range. Maybe, we'll see. Let's get this back to simmering and start choppy chopping our garlic, onions, basil, rosemary, thyme, oregano. Okay, so let's add some ingredients here. Uh, I'm gonna add about this much oregano you guys can figure out how much that is. I'm gonna add about this much thyme, and I'm gonna add a little bit of rosemary, okay? And then I'm gonna add about a half a cup of chopped basil, and some I have not chopped yet. I'll throw that whole thing in there, all right? We're also gonna do one tablespoon of fresh ground black pepper, and one tablespoon of Himalayan salt. So, let's just go ahead and add those ingredients in right now, check it out. So we'll drop them right down in there. Twigs and all. I'm going to pull those out later, okay? Same thing with the unchopped basil and then with the chopped basil. Just get it in there. And we'll get our black pepper in there. And then our tablespoon of Himalayan salt, okay? 
Now we're going to stir all that up. And this has reduced as much as I want it to reduce. So I'm going to keep it covered while it simmers. And then we're going to prep our onions and garlic. I like a good bit of garlic. I'm going to take the root end off. Okay. Just as tight as I can there. We give these bad boys a smash, all right? Just like this right here. Boom, smashy, smashy. Boom, smashy, smashy. Oops, hold still. Boom. Okay, once you've smashed them, you start pulling the, uh, pulling the wrappers off like this right here. Now, this isn't like stock where you can leave the wrappers in there and it's gonna come out later. We have we have strained that as much as we're gonna strain it. So make sure you don't leave those wrappers in there. So that was one whole clove of garlic. Probably gonna do two. For this recipe, we're gonna call it two. But I'm gonna show you guys how to do this right now. Take this garlic, you've already smashed it. Smashing it helps let some of the, oops, there's a little wrapper. We don't want that. Bye-bye. Smashing it helps kind of release some of that flavor, uh, but we're still gonna chop it a little bit smaller. All right, and just kind of set that to the side. With the onion, I kind of take off the biggest loose wrappers here, and then I cut it longwise across the root towards the point, okay? Once we've done that, I take the point and just take a little bit of that off, okay? Somebody's gonna tell me I'm cutting onions wrong, that's fine. It works for me. Then I, I'm gonna peel this down to wherever there is no more like partially dried wrapper. So I'm just gonna peel it back like that. Slice back towards the root, okay? Like so. Then come this way right here. Choppy, choppy. So now we got little onion squares. And I think about one medium sized onion is what I'm looking for here. We're gonna caramelize these bad boys, all right? We're gonna caramelize them. For those of y'all don't know what that means, watch close. Get all my onions in there. All right, this is not a hot pan. There is no oil in this pan. Nothing, it's just a cold pan. I'm gonna put it on here, and I'm gonna turn it up to a little over medium. Turn it up to 11. Okay, medium, slightly over medium. I'm gonna let those things start to come up to 10. So what we're looking for here, guys, is for these things to start to become a little bit translucent, okay? When you caramelize something, you actually kind of bring the sugars out in it, all right? So you can caramelize, I love caramelized carrots. Uh, you can caramelize all kinds of things, but onions is a real common one. And I, and it actually also kind of tames down the, you know, the, that which is a little bit aggressive about an onion. So we're just gonna let those caramelize for a minute before we add our garlic. Okay, see how we're starting to get kind of a caramel look on the outside. These are not done yet, but you can kind of see why they call it caramelized. It's getting there. And somebody's saying, how come you didn't add oil to the pan? Look at all that stuff that's sticking to the bottom of the pan. That's by design. So we're getting there. These are just about what I would call caramelized. <clears throat> so now I'm gonna add my garlic. Garlic, and, and for those of y'all that were wondering how much garlic, it turned out to be a third of a cup. I went ahead and measured it for you because we're making a recipe right now. But you measure garlic with your heart. That's right. You measure garlic with your heart. Until your ancestors tell you to stop. Like I said, I always do. I never use a recipe when I make my pasta sauce. And I am actually measuring today so that we have an actual recipe for those folks that want one that they can follow. Now, I add the garlic in last because garlic doesn't caramelize well. Um, and you don't want to overcook the garlic. You just want to heat it up a little bit. And 
and extract a little bit of that garlic essence into the liquid that isn't in here. I wonder why. Well, see all that stuff on the bottom of the pan we were talking about, guys? Now we need to do what's called deglazing the pan. Uh, I like to use a red usually when I do this. This is a Cabernet Sauvignon that was aged in bourbon barrels. I wonder if it's any good. Have you tried this? I cooked with it the other day. Okay, well, we're going to add some of this to the bottom of the pan just like that. Okay. I didn't measure that. Sorry about that, guys. And then we're going to scrape. See how all that stuff's scraping off the bottom of the pan? This is called deglazing the pan. And we're pulling all that essence of onion and garlic that was stuck to the pan up into the liquid that's now in there. And we're also kind of infusing that liquid with the garlic and the onions. There are so many recipes that honestly, if you start them with this process right here, um, <laughs> caramelize some onions, add some garlic, deglaze the pan with a red wine, build on top of that, it's gonna be amazing. We're gonna add that. I wish I had a stove that had a flame. I know. These electric stoves, man. I know, I miss my, my gas stove We're too. gonna add this. To Aracha. It's like a, you want to get it all, guys. This is this is flavor right here. This is just magicness. If that's a word. If it's not a word, Webster, I just created a word. Magicness. And then stir that in. Oh, oh look at that. Look at that. This is not ready to taste yet, guys. It needs, it needs a minute. It needs about five minutes of simmering before our first taste test. But let me tell you, it looks right. I want to simmer this for another probably 30 minutes because I need to get all that thyme and oregano flavor in there. You have to give the thyme time to gotta simmer. Got to give the thyme some time. Now, look, if you don't want to use fresh oregano, thyme, basil, and rosemary, you can certainly use dried stuff. I don't know if we have any in here. Probably yeah. not because we're growing it, but you can. You certainly can. And it's, look, it's only going to impact the flavor by a little bit. May or may not be noticeable to you. I notice it, I, I, you know, I like that, something about that fresh living, you know, plant that goes into the sauce right before you, you complete it. But let's go ahead and taste it. I can't wait. Can't wait. Can't wait, guys. We got to do this right now. Look at that. Just look at that. That is... That's yummy looking. Smells right. Ooh. I'm gonna let this simmer for about 30 minutes, taste it again, and I may add more garlic and more thyme. We'll see. We are done, guys. This cook is good. I've pulled out uh, all of my branches, my thyme, my rosemary, my all my stuff, and uh, this is what we're left with right here. All right, it smells good, doesn't it? Frankie, I'm gonna let you taste it right now before give me, me. Give me, give me, give me. She's got a complicated palate, guys. Not cheese. What do you think? Needs garlic. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, that's really good. No, I'm kidding. No, that's that's good. I'd put that on my pasta. <laughs> the only thing I would add it's like he's trying to is salt. No, it doesn't. I would add salt. a little Stop. salt, but that's why I'm not going to add any. Because salt's that thing, you guys. I like salt in everything. That you can always add, but you can never take back. So even though I would add a little salt, we're going with this recipe. Hope you guys have been keeping track. We're about to find out how many pints this is as we portion it out. Let's talk about the things you're gonna need now to get this into jars. You're going to need jars, and you're gonna to wanna to process those jars. I just turned this off. It's cooling down right now, but you wanna you want to boil these at um, probably 10 minutes to get them all sterilized. You're going to need some lids for your jars, and you're gonna need some rings for your jars. I got those right here. You're gonna need a little bit of vinegar. I'm using white distilled vinegar and um, a paper towel to wipe your rims with. You're going to need one of these and these.
So now we're just going to start putting in jars. Leave a half inch of head space here for your pint jars. Head space is just that space at the top there. Um, what's going to happen is this stuff's going to kind of boil inside there. And you want to leave enough room for it to boil without it trying to kind of push out between the jar lid. If any of this material pushes out between the jar lid, that lid will then not seal. Which is not the end of the world. You put it in the fridge at that point and use it within a week and you're fine. Guys, we are water bath canning these and we want to make sure that we get the acidity right uh, to make, you know, so nothing goes bad. So <clears throat> I'm using citric acid here. This stuff adds no flavor, but I'm going to put a quarter of a teaspoon per pint right in there. All right. And this is going to just help the shelf stability of this product. We're going to take our white vinegar and we're going to wipe the tops of these jars. What we're doing here is making sure that we didn't get any sauce. See that? On to the top of the jar because that will prevent the lid from sealing. So we're going to clean these real good. And this is 12 jars, 12 pints, and there are actually probably about three more pints in here. So um, I'm guessing we got about 15 pints out of this recipe. Okay, we take our lids right out of the boiling water and set them onto the top of the jars. This little magnet really helps. You want to put your rings on just not even finger tight, just barely like till they kind of snug up. You want these jars to be able to burp a little bit. Go in. Now I can already tell I got too much water in there because I just want this water to barely be at the top of the jar. So I'm going to pull some of that water out. Violent water throwing across the kitchen currently taking place. I do not approve of this message. <laughs> just flinging it. <laughs> it's all good. There we go. That's about right. See how the water's just kind of coming up. Ooh, that's hot. That's well, hot. Yeah. Um, that's how much water you want. Dial it in. Get it right. All right. So now I've had this on. You can look right here because I don't have a, a real stove that has a flame. I've had this on at a simmer. To keep this water hot now we were we had hot jars we had processed we were packing them with hot material and we then put them into hot water guys it's important to pay attention to this because if you take cold product put it into cold jars drop those jars into hot water boom bad idea don't do that pay attention to your thermals but if everything's hot keep this water hot because it's going to get up to a boil faster now we're going to turn this up to a boil I'm going to boil these for 10 minutes. Once it comes to a boil, I'm going to set my timer for 10 minutes, and then they're done. All right, guys, we boiled them for 10 minutes. We're going to pull them out, start setting them on here. Ooh, that one already popped. Very important that these lids pop, guys. See that indention built into the lids? Their popping tells you that they've sealed. If they do not seal, you want to put them in the fridge, use them within a week. If they seal, they're shelf-stable now for about a year. We're going to uh, go ahead and can up the rest of the sauce that's in the pot. And then remember that tomato juice from earlier? Yeah, this stuff right here. We're going to do the same thing with this. There's the finished product right there. That is, ooh, that's hot. That is our tomato pasta sauce, all right? It's not just tomato sauce, it's pasta sauce. It's the bomb, all right? I got 16 pints. 
of tomato sauce out of that recipe. And I got another six pints of this tomato juice. Now, don't discard this, guys. This tomato juice right here is awesome. Now, if you like to drink tomato juice, drink it. If, if you're into, what's that drink that you make on like Sunday mornings? Bloody Mary. Bloody, if you're into Bloody Marys, this makes a great Bloody Mary. But here's some things that you can do with it that you may not be thinking about right now. Use this tomato juice to add to your soup. Use it to, uh, to simmer some meat or some sausage in. Use it as the juice that you add when making meatloaf. Or my personal favorite, use this as the liquid when making rice. Tomato juice, don't overlook it. There we have it, guys. 16 pints of pasta sauce and 6 pints of tomato juice. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Hope you got something out of it. Hope you wrote down the recipe. This was the only time that I have ever actually broken down the recipe and weighed everything that I did. So this video is the recipe. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and click the bell so you get the notifications. If you guys got feedback about something about my pasta sauce, first of all, my pasta sauce is awesome. So if you got feedback, you want to tell me I'm doing something wrong, I'll read it. I'll consider it. But my pasta sauce is the bomb. Have a great day, guys. Love you.